Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 8, from 2 to 3, we were dealing with the metallic bonds. So today, lesson 9, we want to proceed to the types of bonds across the period. And we are saying the type of bond formed depends on the electrons and the atoms energy level. So in this lesson, we'll be mainly dealing with the oxides of elements in period 3 in terms of structure and bonding. So kindly stay with us until the end of the video. And we are seeing the elements in period 3 form oxides when they react with oxygen. The oxides of sodium and magnesium dissolve in water to form alkaline solutions. And we are told that aluminium oxide does not dissolve in water. So let us go to sodium and we see the equations for the reaction that will occur when sodium reacts with oxygen and when the product form is dissolved in water, what we are going to see. So sodium bias oxygen, we are going to get sodium oxide. Then sodium oxide will dissolve in water to form sodium hydroxide. Remember learners, when a metal reacts with oxygen, we get metal oxide. Then when metal oxide is dissolved in water, we form metal hydroxide only. So we go number B, that's magnesium, because we are done with sodium, we go to magnesium. Magnesium solid will react with oxygen gas, giving us magnesium oxide. Then when magnesium oxide is added to water, what we are going to get is magnesium hydroxide solution. So, but C, we are going to go to aluminium, then aluminium solid will react with oxygen gas to form aluminium oxide. And remember we said aluminium oxide does not dissolve in water so next we are going to go to the oxides of non-metals we say they dissolve in water to form acidic solution however silicon oxide does not dissolve in water so after aluminium we are going to go to silicon in bt three elements we are going to have silicon which will react with oxygen gas giving us silicon oxide. but silicon oxide does not dissolve in water so after silicon, we have phosphorus. Phosphorus will react with oxygen gas, giving us phosphorus 5 oxide. So when phosphorus 5 oxide is dissolved in water, what we are going to get is phosphoric 5 acid. Next, we are going to have sulfur. Then sulfur will react with oxygen, giving us sulfur peroxide gas. So when sulfur peroxide gas is dissolved in water, what we are going to get is sulfuric 4 acid learners. When nonmetals like sulfur and phosphorus reacts with oxygen, we are going to get nonmetal oxides. So when nonmetal oxides dissolve in water, what we are going to get is acidic solution. So that's what is going to happen. We are saying oxides of sodium and magnesium reacts with acids to form a salt and water. We are told aluminium oxide reacts with both acids and alkalis and therefore it is an amphoteric oxide. So learners, you remember we are having sodium oxide and magnesium oxide. So that means they are bases, then when they react with acids, what we are going to get is salt and also water as our only product. But we are told aluminium oxide will react with both acids and bases or a strong bases or alkalis, therefore it is an amphoteric oxide. Remember, we said amphoteric oxides are oxides that show both basic and acidic characteristics or they are oxides that react with both acids and bases. So next we are seeing oxides of non-metals such as sulfur peroxide and also phosphorus 5 oxide does not dissolve with acids but they react with alkalis so that they form salt and also water as the only products. So next we are seeing all the oxides of elements in period 3 as solids except those of sulfur and chlorine which are gases at room temperature. So next we are saying sulfur peroxide is a gas at room temperature. What is the reason why sulfur peroxide is a gas at room temperature? We are saying this is because sulfur peroxide is a molecular substance. Hence, its atoms are held together by strong covalent bonds. But the molecules of sulfur peroxide in turn themselves are held together by a weak van der Waals forces. 
which requires little energy to break. For that reason, sulfur peroxide is a gas at room temperature. Okay, learners, even remember we are told chlorine is a gas at room temperature. So if we are asked the reason why chlorine is a gas at room temperature, the reason will be the same. We are going to say this is because chlorine is a molecular substance or chlorine gas is a molecular substance. Hence, it is atoms are held together by strong covalent bonds, but the molecules of chlorine in turn themselves are held together by weak van der Waals forces, which requires little energy to break. For that reason, chlorine is a gas at room temperature. So next we are saying the melting point of magnesium is higher than that of sodium oxide, though both of them have giant ionic structure. So what is the reason why magnesium oxide is having a higher melting point compared to sodium oxide? We are saying this is because magnesium oxide has a stronger ionic bond compared to sodium oxide. Remember both of them they are having giant ionic structure with strong ionic bonds. But the ionic bond in magnesium oxide is stronger than the ionic bond in sodium oxide. So next we are saying silicon peroxide has high melting and boiling points. This is because silicon peroxide has a giant atomic or giant covalent structure with a strong covalent bonds which requires a lot of heat energy to break. So for this reason silicon peroxide is having high melting and boiling bonds and we are saying in conclusion in general the type or the bond type changes from ionic to covalent across the oxides of elements in b3 and the structure of the oxides changes from giant ionic to giant covalent and finally to molecular structure across the period lastly let us see the table showing the type of bonds and the properties of the oxides of elements in period 3 so here we're having the oxides that's sodium oxide and uh, 2o then next we're having magnesium oxide aluminium oxide silicon peroxide phosphorus 5 oxide sulfur peroxide then here we're having uh, an oxide of chlorine so next what we are supposed to know is the physical state they are solid all of them except sulfur peroxide and an oxide of chlorine so the melting point and the boiling point is as shown here and remember we said magnesium is having a higher melting point compared to sodium and the reason that we have given was magnesium oxide is having a strong ionic bond compared to sodium oxide remember that so next we can see here the structures and the type of bonding so sodium oxide magnesium oxide and aluminium oxide they are having ionic bonding because we are having the metals reacting with oxygen which is non-metals the type of bond there will be ionic bonding when we go to silicon phosphorus sulfur and chlorine the type of bond we are having there is covalent bond because the reaction is in between non-metals then next we are having the type of structures the way we said it changes from giant ionic structure to giant covalent or giant atomic structure then finally to molecular structure the way you see then next let's go to the nature of the oxides we are having four types or four nature of oxides one of them is basic oxides like for example we are having sodium oxide and magnesium oxide which are having basic oxides so aluminium oxide is having amphetamine oxides so silicon peroxide sulfur peroxide and also phosphorus 5 oxide and also an oxide of chlorine are having acidic oxides the reason why they are having acidic oxides is that when they are dissolved in water they form acidic solution then the fourth type of oxide or nature of oxide was neutral oxide so we have none of neutral oxides here remember an example of neutral oxides they include water nitrogen one oxide and also nitrogen two oxide the next we are going to go to reaction with acids so remember when a base like sodium oxide that side of uh, magnesium oxide and also aluminium oxide when they are reacted with acids we are going to form salt and water although aluminium oxide is a bacteria so that means it will react both acids and also bases but silicon peroxide uh, phosphorus 5 oxide sulfur peroxide and an oxide of chlorine will not react or will not dissolve in acid learners that's the end of our class today thank you for watching